Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Sports in the Mitten. I'm your host, Adam Biggers, and we are going to talk about Michigan versus Maryland. We're going to get into Ohio State, uh, Michigan State, not a lot to talk about. Uh, honestly, with that game, it was uh, it was pretty much over. I, I thought once the Buckeyes got up two touchdowns in the first quarter that, that it was pretty much over, and it was. So uh, we won't spend a whole lot of time on that, but Michigan, there's a lot to talk to uh, about Michigan, so we're going to get into that as soon as... Uh, Start seeing you guys enter the room. I'm going to tweet the uh, live link right now. Big Bubble Blue, what's up, man? How you doing? I was going to wait until after the Lions game. I don't want to jinx it, but up 38-24. I'm assuming that they're probably going to win, so we'll see. I, I tweeted jokingly earlier that I'd go live as soon as the uh, Lions blew it, but it doesn't look like they're going to, so... Give me one second, guys. I'm going to go ahead and type, uh, tweet this link. And uh, while you guys are waiting, uh, please like, subscribe, share the channel, podcast, getting a ton of views. Um, pretty good. I mean, not a ton, not like thousands, but really good crowd. You guys, you know, regular crowd. I think I know who to expect by now. But uh, we're growing, so it's definitely, uh, definitely a good time. If I know how to type here. And while you're at it, please follow me on Twitter, at AdamBiggers81. All right, the hard part's over. Let's get into the easy part. I tweeted out the link. Adam Lang, what's up, Adam? How you doing? Matt the Destroyer, too. Says, I feel like Michigan's offense is improving, except for our pass blocking. Big Bubble Blues, Sparty losing really helps. We just need to win out. Going back to what Patrick Kugler said when they were 5-2. and two, You just, you never, you never know. And it was just so... I feel like a lot of Michigan fans were so quick to RIP the season after the Penn State loss, and that's just not the case, guys. I mean, um, not saying you guys in particular, but people at large. I feel like if you watch enough college football, and if you know, Michigan has something, and we'll get into that, but there is something with the offense. Defense never been in question at all this year. There is something with the offense, and it's, I mean, it's the ground game, really. I have a couple stats. I want to talk about David Long. Uh, I want to talk, we'll get into some injury talk as well. Uh, who's out, who's going to be returning, uh, that sort of thing. Not a lot of clear information on that, but there is a little bit floating around. So and I'll be at a Jim Harbaugh's press conference tomorrow in Ann Arbor uh, previewing the Wisconsin game. And I want, I want to talk a little bit about Jonathan Taylor, Wisconsin, too. So Rock City, what's good, Adam? How you doing, Rock City? Um, Aaron Quinney says, Pepper's out of position out there. He needs to be a box safety. They got him way deep. I, I watched the Brill a little bit. My TV's downstairs. I do the podcast upstairs in, in my little office, man cave, whatever, memorabilia room, dream bedroom of my 12-year-old self, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, definitely I think more of a, uh, I mean, I think the, the positionless argument for Jabril went out the window, but I do think that he's better suited as a safety any word on Nico, Rock City? No word on Nico. Let's start with the injuries. Rashawn Gary, apparent arm injury, nothing specific on that. Kron Higdon, uh, it was reported by a few outlets. It was a high ankle sprain. Nothing, uh, you know, definitely confirmed on that. Um, Lavert Hill taken out for concussion protocol. They're watching him. David Long uh, was removed from the game, but then came back into the game. And I'm trying to think who else. Uh, didn't see Grant Perry. We, we were told that there would be a good chance to see Grant Perry this week. We did not see him. Uh, Ty Isaac. I, I'm guessing because it was ribs earlier in the year. I don't know. But that was the last kind of clear word that we got on what type of injury that it was. So, I mean, you guys know Jim Harbaugh. And, and actually, Jim Harbaugh has kind of been a little bit looser, I think, when it when it comes to the injuries. If it, if he wants to talk about it, and again, if it's something that happens on the field and that everybody sees it, then he'll talk about it. If it's something that like happened in practice or something, he, does, he doesn't need to address it, I guess, in his mind. So, um, Matt the Destroyer says, in Madden, you can do the wildcat with peppers. It's so fun. <laughs> Aaron Quinney says, Mo Hurst said Rashawn was straight. And, think, and uh, speaking of Mo Hurst, my friend, guys, I don't know if you... If, Quick count. Who watched the uh, the live stream from Dallas when I was down there for Michigan versus Florida? Had a few buddies with me, and Nate Tuttle being one of them. So, if Nate, you're watching this. Uh, what's up, man? Mo Hurst actually gave Nate and his buddy uh, his his gloves. I tweeted the photo. He gave him his gloves uh, after the Rutgers game. So, Nate took the left one. His buddies got the right one. 
And I, I don't know if there's going to be some kind of, uh, if they're just sharing or if there's going to be some kind of trade down the road. Because that's a complete set, obviously. Um, it's pretty cool. But it is cool, you know, the fact that I guess Mo they waved him over and Mo Hurst went over there and just took off his gloves and handed them to him. So it's pretty cool. Big Bubble Blue says I did. Then Yeah, Big Bubble Blue, then you know Nate, he, he had like a whole year's worth of Michigan gear packed with him. Uh, in our hotel room, he put up a big Michigan flag over the window and, and, uh, he actually made it, he made a cameo on the podcast, if you guys remember too, so. Uh, Matt the Destroyer 2, do you think Spate will ever start again? I've been saying this for a long time, don't rule him out. I mean, I don't, I can't say definitively, but I'm leaning more toward yes than no. And does that mean this year? I don't know. Does it mean next year? I mean, if he sticks around, Will and Spate is still going to be a factor in the starting quarterback race. Like it or not, I know there's there's a lot of guys out there, a lot of a lot of people, fans, women in general, whoever, fans in general want to see the Brandon Peters era get started, you know, at the beginning of the season, really. So I think though, with Wilton Spade, if he returns back healthy, and Jim Harbaugh commented last week that Wilton was progressing, even uh, surprising doctors at how fast he said he's young and healthy and, and progressing really well. So, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised, no. Is it likely? I I don't know if I don't know if I could say that it's likely, but again, don't rule it out. I know I'm kind of going, I'm I'm playing it safe in the middle there, but I am leaning more toward yes. I think I think that there is probably a good chance that we see Wilton Spate this year, whether it's against Ohio State or if it's in the bowl game. Adam Lang says, "Are you concerned that the receivers aren't really involved in the passing game? Our backs and tight ends seem to be our only pass catchers this year." Well, Adam, and I wanted to make this comment about the Maryland game. I mean, that was power football at its finest, really, I think. And Jim Harbaugh said uh, that the Wolverines executed in all three phases, probably the best that they have done all year. But I'm looking at the use of the tight ends. I'm looking at the use of the fullbacks. That's stuff that we talked about earlier in the year that wasn't really, you know, they weren't using them, you know. For lack of a better term, they weren't using uh, Sean McHugh in that much or, or Zach Gentry. I mean, we saw Gentry, Tyrone Wheatley, uh, Jr. We saw... Uh, you know, McCune, I really like Sean McCune. I think he's going to be one of the best tight ends in the, in the Big Ten. And, I mean, I think he might even be able to make the, that case for Zach Gentry. Both of those guys are just on the upward uh, trajectory. And what I really liked, um, that it was red zone play, lined up, Khalid Hill, fullback, single in the backfield, set McCune in motion. It looks like it's going to be a fullback dive, and then, boom, just Brandon rolls out and hits McCune. Just... It was simple play, really well executed though. When it's executed well, it looks easy. But that kind of stuff is, you know, we haven't really seen a whole lot of it. Deep ball, okay, yeah, I get it that there are con- some some concerns there, but at the same time, look at the way. I mean, I, I know a lot, of, and I tweeted this yesterday, tongue in cheek. You guys know how I am, you know. With everybody wants Chris Evans sucks, Khalid Hudson sucks, Josh Metello sucks. All these guys have big games yesterday, and they've had big games all year. But the the one mistake that they make, then they suck. And, um, so, you know, I, I, obviously I never say anything like that. I, I don't ever, I don't ever think in those terms. I look at guys who are, who are trying, you know, they're, you know, living their dream, whatever is a division one athlete, Mike, you know, guys like Mike McCray. I, I feel like people are so, have been so critical of, of Mike. They've been critical of Josh. They've been critical of Tyree. And, and yeah, Josh and Tyree had a little bit of hiccups there in, in the Pats coverage. But I mean, Josh Metellus yesterday with a black punt, um, that one scramble brand, where he didn't wrap up, or it was, uh, sorry, it wasn't Brand. I have it right here. Hold on. Lorenzo, uh, what's his name? Lorenzo Ellison, I think, the running back. Anyway, looked like he was going to get to the edge. Josh kind of went up high a little bit, couldn't wrap him up. He ended up uh, coming back. He was chased. I think it was uh, Kalik and, and uh, Chase Winovich. Uh, who who chased him back in between the hash marks, and then Josh ended up finishing the tackle. So let me get that. Yeah, I think it was Lorenzo Harrison in the third. If you guys remember that play. But uh, anything specific? I feel like I have a lot of stats, kind of topics that I want to address, but I do want to keep it concise today, guys. Uh, we're going on ten minutes. I I really do have things to do. I know it's been busy lately. Trying like I like I said, been trying to kind of plan out the next move and everything. Matt the Destroyer too. what happened to Ian Bunting? No, what, what are you referencing? Uh, Matt, Aaron Quinney says, we could beat Whiskey, we shut that traditional offense down, we struggle with the RPO offense running quarterback. Let's talk about that real quick, guys, because Jonathan Taylor, 
Wisconsin running back, he's already rushed for 1,500 yards this year. I mean, that's like Karan and Chris combined. And uh, he's got 12 touchdowns. This guy's just, he, put it this way, he, there's only three times this year he hasn't rushed for 100 yards. And those teams were Utah State, and that was a 59-10 to blowout. He had nine carries for 87 yards and a touchdown, including a long of 41. Um, against Northwestern, 33-24, uh, went 19 carries for 80 yards, um, a long of 11 and two touchdowns. Against Illinois, 12 carries for 73 yards and a long of 29, no touchdowns. But, I mean, those are I mean those are solid. Like, that's a good Chris Evans game. Man, John, Jonathan Taylor is just at another level with his production. And I, I think that that... I think that actually bodes well for Michigan because of the rush defense. You know that Jonathan Taylor is going to be the main component of Wisconsin's offensive attack. So if you can if you can keep Jonathan Taylor from getting his, then I think you have a pretty good shot. And again, that's kind of all contingent on that, if you could keep Jonathan Taylor from getting his. So Adam wants to know, are we going to beat Wisconsin? Uh, if you want a yes or no answer, I say no right now. It's a road game. Big, big road game. I know in Maryland, that was a big road game. Brandon Peters played well. But, I mean, Wisconsin was, was already a game that I, I was kind of iffy on to begin with. But I do like the matchup. The more that I've seen both of these teams play, I, I do think it is a favorable matchup. So let's go 51% Wisconsin is the way that I'm leaning right now. Michael Allen says, Wisconsin just plugs a new running back in every year and still dominant. Michigan used to be like that, but we need to start recruiting O-line better. I think the offensive line's been pretty good the past three weeks, though, Michael. And, and again, I know it is it is lower-tier competition. A lot of people are talking about that. Is there improvement? Yes. Are they not playing quite it's tough teams? Yes. But the improvement's there uh, nonetheless. And I did. I want to go back real quick from when I was talking about why. You guys watch, re-watch some of this, re, not, or maybe not even some of it, Rewatch the entire game. Tell me that Donovan Peoples-Jones was not the best blocking wide receiver out there. Downfield blocking Donovan, uh, big on a Kron Higdon run. The, the, the upfield blocking, period. I mean, the blocking on David Long's 80-yard uh, interception was really good. You had Josh Metellus. He was leading the convoy. Uh, Aubrey Solomon was in there. Uh, Josh Uche threw a good block. Josh Uche had a nice game. You know, you're starting to see some of these other guys that we've been talking about, you know, since they've committed and, and since camp, and people wanted to know, like, yeah, they're going to be in the two deep. How much of Aubrey were we going to see this year? Well, we're seeing a little bit of them, you know. And in a couple of weeks ago, and I'm mentioning Quiddy Pay, Michael Dwumfor, those kind of guys. But Josh Uche, and I remember Don Brown telling me um, at the Orange Bowl last year because Josh was injured, he he didn't participate um, in bowl practices. But he did say that up until that point, that Josh was one of the best up and coming pass rushers on the team. So. Michael Allen says, I think game being at noon will help Michigan. Atmosphere may not be as electric as Penn State was. Yeah, and you guys, I, if I'm Michigan, I'm, you know, just in general, and I'll tell it to you guys from, like, my perspective, these night games, like, for instance, a 7 o'clock kickoff, 8 o'clock kickoff, I mean, that is a late, late night for a sports writer. So if you're, um, you know, if you're expecting some kind of uh, great pieces of writing, you know, right after those games, you guys got to understand a lot of, uh, especially people who work for the newspapers, they're on deadline, so they can't, you know, they're not pushing out Pulitzer there. They're just giving you what what they can quickly, and then, you know, the next day is the follow-up. That's the good stuff, so. Adam Lang says, Ohio State beat up on Mich Michigan State. Don't know what team we'll see when we play them. Hopefully that same team that struggled against Iowa. Yeah, I mean, that, I'm not surprised Michigan State lost that game. I am surprised Michigan State was never a factor in that game. Never. No life whatsoever for the Spartans in that game. Worst, worst loss in Mark D'Antonio's tenure, uh, no doubt about it. I thought that uh, loss last year to Wisconsin was his worst home loss. And then you could probably put in even this year's loss, 38-13 in Notre Dame. But uh, as a whole, road, home, bowl, whatever, Saturdays, 48-3. Uh, to 3. I mean, it doesn't get much than that. And it's almost like you'd rather just... Just see a zero there, because really, I mean, that three, that field goal, that's like an insult, basically. So, um, Matt the Destroyer says, Michigan would beat MSU if they had a rematch, no doubt. Well, I mean, and, and Matt, I'll tell you this, a lot of people will say, like, the weather thing, too, and, I've, and I think I mentioned this before. Well, Michigan would have won that game if the weather, I mean, who's to say that Michigan State wouldn't have played much better, you know, if the weather was nice, too. So, I think maybe right now, based... Based on what we've seen, I mean, still beating Penn State was a quality win for Michigan State. 
I think it's easy right now, though, to say yeah, after you just watch Michigan State get blown out and then you've seen Michigan um, offense and defense really good for the past three weeks. Defense has been really good all year. There's only been, like, three teams this year, I believe, that have scored more than two touchdowns on Michigan. I'll pull up a Florida did in the opener. That was 17 points. And I'm trying to think. Uh, okay, 27-20 win over Indiana. But that was field goal, so two touchdowns. Uh, Rutgers scored two touchdowns. Everybody else, you know, we're talking 10, 13 points. And to pat myself on the back, I did predict 31 to 10. Pretty close. Pretty close on that one. But, um, yeah, real quick, guys, I'm going to get to your questions. I'm kind of all over the place today. I'll go with this, though, because I want, I mentioned Levert Hill and David Long earlier. I want to mention Levert Hill right now. And this is from, uh, Pro Football Focus, College Football. Uh, Michigan cornerback Lavert Hill was targeted twice by Maryland today, yesterday, and did not allow a single reception. He has played some impressive ball against big opponents this season. So he's had 19 targets, six completed passes for 31 yards. He's had a pick and five passes defended. So he's disrupting, uh, you know, roughly 20%, almost 20% on the nose. He's getting his hand on the ball. Or even more if you count the interception. So six out of 19 targets, he's either getting his hand on the ball or he's picking it off. So uh, Lavert Hill having a tremendous year, and, and you know I know that there was some concern about the uh, secondary this year, and you know they're not facing you know world beater quarterbacks right now. But this is I, I believe that Michigan's offense. I think Michigan as a whole is gaining a lot of confidence, and that's why um, you know and mat match up well. I mean I expect a good game against Wisconsin. I do. I think that we, I think that we might see Michigan play its best game in the season, win or lose, uh, at Wisconsin. Jeremy Turner says, Biggs, what's good? Hey, Jeremy, how you doing? Uh, Mike, Michael Allen says, shout out to the field hockey team. They're in the final four. Who, uh, Michigan's? I did not know that. I know Michigan hockey won over the week. I think it was Minnesota. Someone tweeted that at me. I used to be really into, into uh, and, and back then it was CCHA. Uh, you know, before before uh, it, you know, they turned it in the Big Ten, but it was the CCHA, WCHA. Minnesota was WCHA. I used to be really into college hockey. I used to be really into hockey. Period. Uh, Matt the Destroyer too says we faced some of the best receivers in the Big Ten. That's true. And DJ Moore didn't do. I mean, what he had like four or five catches for thirty-seven yards. He wasn't a factor. Lavert had a nice uh, pass breakup on him, or maybe or was that David Long? They took that they they took that deep shot, batted it down. Was that Levert Hill or David Long? Matt the Destroyer says that's what I think will be deciding factor. Peters hasn't turned it over yet, and Hornerbrook is a, is a, is turnover prone. At the same time, guys, too, keep in mind what is carrying this Michigan offense. It is the offensive line, it is, and it is the the running backs right now. They're not going to ask Brandon probably to throw the ball more than twenty times. I mean, just look at the stats right now. Uh, and, you know, they're going to continue to feed Chris and Karan, and that's been the bread and butter. You know, he's not, Brandon's not going to take a ton of shots downfield. He's going to use his tight ends, and they're going to keep him, you know, to a minimum game plan. I'd be I'd be surprised if we saw Brandon Peters throw, you know, more than 20 pass attempts in the game this season. Aaron Quinney says, I do wish they would have let Brandon push the ball, the ball downfield more. He's going to have to make some third and long passes versus Wisconsin because, you know, we like to run. And then pass on third, uh, shaking my head. Uh, Matt the Destroyer 2 says, is Karan ready to play? No official word. They're saying high ankle sprain. So Big Bubble Blue says, Ruiz doing a great job on the right side. Big boost to a bad right side. Yeah, I, I, like, I like Caesar. I, I figured that he would start. Michael Allen says, yeah, Michigan field hockey team is in the final four. Jeremy Turner says, it's the O-line. Have to give them a little credit by far. Yeah, by far from perfect. But yeah, give them some credit. I agree, Jeremy. Bredesen was really good yesterday. Uh, Patrick Kugler was really good yesterday. Cesar Ruiz. I mean, Jawan Bushel beat. I mean, you could, Mason Cole, you could say, you could point out a lot of positives for every single one of those guys on the line. Matt the Destroyer 2 says Ruiz is a beast. He is, and he's very smart. Very intelligent. I was impressed with Cesar uh, when I interviewed him over the spring. And there's a, there's a recent video, it's from last week, um, check that out with Caesar and asking him about the transition. He's just, he's just a mature player, uh, 
Jim Harbaugh said that he was beyond his years, and he'll say that about guys, uh, you know, and he means it, and I th I totally agree. You can slap that label on Cesar Ruiz if it Ruiz, if you have a list of players who are beyond their years at Michigan, Cesar Ruiz belongs on that list. Matt the Destroyer Two says, O line is much is much better run blocking than pass blocking. Well, and I mean they're running the ball <laughs> pretty well, aren't they? So. I think that I think that's okay. Speaking of running, guys, did you know what is the common factor? And if you guys follow me on Twitter, maybe you saw me tweet this earlier. If you don't follow me on Twitter, uh, you should at Adam Biggers eighty one and check out my free agent blog, Adam Biggers uh, WordPress dot com. Adam Biggers blog WordPress dot com. What is the common factor in Michigan's two losses this season? Anybody? Anybody? Well, wait a second, because I know one, someone out there knows it, and it's kind of like a quirky little stat. I don't really know how. I mean, in a way, I mean, yeah, it, it does. I'll explain it when I when I tell you. Jeremy Turner says he subscribed. Good article. Yeah, thank you, Jeremy. I'll I'll be writing more on it, but like I said, you know, it's been. It's kind of an in-between time for me right now. Matt Crittenton says, lack of run game. Matt, uh, you are almost absolutely right. And it's not lack of because they rushed for 100 both times, but 103 against Michigan, 103 and 102 Michigan State, Penn State losses. So when Michigan runs for more than 104 yards, it is undefeated this season. And again, kind of a quirky stat, but yeah, basically Michigan's winning when it runs the ball really well. And Penn State had decent rush defense. Michigan State, really good rush defense. And, yeah, it's a, kind of a quirky little stat, but you go through it. I mean, they rushed for 160 against Maryland yesterday, but anything more than, uh, than 103 yards in Michigan's winning that game, statistically, this year. Adam Lang says, uh, oh, Aaron Quinney says, too many to pick from, LOL. Adam Lang says, will be interesting to see if we can run the ball against a very good Wisconsin defense. Could determine the outcome of the game. Absolutely, Adam. Uh, Matt the Destroyer, too, says, Crown was averaging five yards per carry versus MSU. Yeah, he had, what, he had like 10 carries uh, in the first half yesterday. He didn't play in the second half. I mean, Crown, Crown was going off. Big Bubble Blue says, and that's what we're known for, run, 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 play action. Let me check off all here. Topics. We talked about Jonathan Taylor. Cleek Hudson continues to be among uh, national leaders in tackles for loss. He's got 14 and a half. Uh, Chase Winovich, I'm pretty sure has... Let me look. I'm pretty sure he's got 14, but he's not listed. And I don't know if it's updated or not. But here, let me look. Because Michigan's official stat site on mgoblue.com has Chase Winovich with 14 tackles for loss. Mo Hurst with 12 and a half. So you look at Mo, Chase, and Kalik, and according to NCAA.com stats, Kalik, 14 and a half, top 10, he's number nine in the country, but I don't see Chase on here. And then I do not see Maurice Hurst on here either. And this is the top 50 guys in Christian Rector of South Southern California, USC, has 10 tackles for losses. So I'm not sure if this has been, I don't believe this has been updated yet. But basically you have uh, three guys on one defense who are top 10, 15 in the country in tackles for losses. And if that doesn't say something about the uh, ferocity of Don Brown's defense at Michigan, I don't know what does. They are, and, I, and I wrote this uh, last week on my, on my free agent blog, Klee Hudson has redefined the Viper position. And I don't like comparing. Jabril Pepper is hell of an athlete, okay? But for the Viper position, what do you want? Kalik is more of a hitter. Kalik interceptions. That was a knock on Jabril. And last year, you know, they were saying, well, they didn't really need Jabril to do that. It wasn't lack of interceptions. It was just he wasn't asked to really do that. But, I mean, Kalik has, Kalik has done everything, I, I think, that Don Brown laid out when he when he explained what he wanted the Viper position to, to be. He wanted him to be effectively like a stingray, you know, uh, I remember um, uh, last year Jim Harbaugh was comparing Jabril as a Viper as a cruise missile. I mean, and I wrote in my article, well, if Jabril was a cruise missile, then Kalik is the entire artillery. Kalik is the complete package at Viper. Kalik Hudson has redefined 
claimed it as his own. Uh, they might as well just call it the Kalik. That's that's kind of <laughs> that's how I'm viewing it as. Kalik Hudson has done a phenomenal job of making the Viper position his at Michigan. Adam Lang says, "Do you believe McCray is having it down here? Doesn't look fast enough to cover running backs in space." Mike McCray is not the fastest linebacker Michigan has. We all know that, and I think um, you know when he plays alongside guys who are really quick, then it maybe makes him look slower. But this is a guy, and I tweeted at Mike. He favored a couple tweets. Mike McCray is a hell of a player, and I said this last year. You put him on any Big Ten defense, he's either their best defensive player or one of them. He's on a stacked Michigan defense right now where he might be the fourth, fifth, sixth best guy on the defense. And that's just because look at this defense. But, I mean, if I, I just for instance, Mike McCray was over at Michigan State, he'd be one of their better defensive players. If Mike McCray was at Indiana, he and Tigre would be their best. I mean, you know, if he was at Northwestern, Minnesota, I mean, most of the Big Ten schools, Mike would be one of their better defensive players. And and I was asked last night, you know, like why I I find it just really reckless, and especially people who could do it anonymously. And even if it is your real account, you'll never see this guy face to face. You know, you could just tweet whatever kind of stuff that you want at him. And and I think that that's just it's uncalled for. I get that you know fans want to express their frustrations and things like that, and these guys aren't free. Um, of criticism, you know, and of, of course they're made. They're major athletes. They're going to be criticized, but I think some of the stuff on Twitter is just absolutely ridiculous. And uh, I've always gone by the the rule: if I say it or write it, you know, if I say it here or if I write it somewhere, it it'd be nothing. They might not like it, but I would say it to their face, um, basically. And I think it's really easy for people to just get real reckless and vulgar and. This guy sucks, and this guy, they you know, they don't know half of it. So that's why I tweeted that tweet last night about, here's a list of players who suck, because in the past few weeks, people have been on Kalik, believe it or not. Uh, people, uh, before before the uh, Minnesota game, people were on Kalik a little bit. They've been on Mike almost like all year. Been on Tyree a little bit. Been on Josh a little bit. So, I mean, it's, it's easy. Okay, well, the guy makes mistakes out of position. Boy, he sucks. Okay, well, that's like once or twice. What about the 50 other times when he is in position and making a play? Why aren't you talking about that? So that's that's the way I view it. Ryan Kaufman says we need to get the wide receivers more action. I think tight end, power football, running backs, just cram it down their throats working right now. I mean, the, we saw, uh, what was it, a 33-yard pass? Beautiful ball. Beautiful ball, uh, Brandon Peters. A little bit. I think I think uh, Zach Gentry had to slow down a little bit. But when you when he releases the ball, it just looks good. And I know people, you know, that was a knock on John O'Corn. People would say the same thing about Will and Spate. Kind of like a clunky delivery. That could, Brandon Peters has a, a smooth delivery. Matt Crittenton says, I feel like McCray would be a much better weak side DE like Winovich. He's not big enough. Uh, but he's just not fast enough anymore. Too many spread offenses. Uh, Michael Allen says, Will Winovich be coming back next year? I thought, I heard he was granted a red shirt, but I'm go blue has him as a senior. Yeah. Well, academically, he is a senior, but he, he's a redshirt junior um, athletically. And I actually had this conversation uh, with my friend Cody last night. Uh, I watched a game with those guys, and uh, they, he asked me the same question. Do you think, I think, I mean, Chase Chase is having the kind of, state, Chase is having the stat stuffer kind of year, but I mean, he isn't big, prototypical NFL size. You know, they're not going to plug him in, I don't think, as a defensive end. I think he'd probably be an outside linebacker. He did. He has bulked up a lot, and maybe he could continue to do that. But I mean, Chase is Chase has speed, strength, and he's smart. So I mean, wherever Chase, I I believe Chase is going to play on Sundays. Is it after this year? I don't know. Is it after next year? If he comes back to Michigan and uh, and has a year like he's had so far, and then some, then maybe he plays himself, you know, into an early round pick. Matt the Destroyer says, OSU's receivers aren't the best, but they're very fast. How do you think our secondary matches up? Uh, yeah, Ohio State's receivers are really fast. I like the way, I don't think there's any real big mismatches there. What I'm looking at is Mike Weber and J.K. Dobbins. Ryan Kaufman says, good, because our secondary is very underrated. I think so. I mean, the, the youth question was fair. Just because how many games the experience part? How many games have these guys played coming into this year? 
Was there going to be a learning curve? Absolutely. We saw with David Long, the very first game of the year, David Long, long pass completed against Florida. He wasn't even looking. You know, it's that little stuff, right? They got it cleaned up. Michigan secondary, uh, I think, what, seven or seven or eight interceptions this year? I don't have the stats up. Michael Allen says, wasn't able to watch the game yesterday, but did Grant Perry travel with the team? I do not know. I didn't see him on the field. I watched from home. I didn't travel. R.A.G. Three replay says Paris Campbell is is good for Ohio State. Yeah, per, yeah, forget Paris Campbell, they're freshmen. Ohio State's loaded in the backfield. Matt the Destroyer too says oh, Ohio State's receivers have dropped so many open passes. I'm not too afraid. Uh R A G three replay says good. Yeah, I knew what you meant there. Ryan Kaufman says he was there. Uh Grant Perry did travel. Perry played. I didn't see him. Maybe it was the time I was looking away. It was different for me, guys, because I wasn't watching it so much as, like, I'm covering the game. I actually went out for the first time in a long time and just watched the game, like, you know, with my friends. Just, you know, relaxing time, had uh, had some food, you know, sat, sat around. I was with the guys that I went to Dallas with. Just had a good time. You know, I was paying attention to the game, but if you guys saw yesterday, I mean, I wasn't really on Twitter a whole lot. It was it was, it was weird. I wanted to, I wanted to see because it's been a long time since I've just been able to sit down and watch a game as a fan of college football, and it's not, you know, sitting there and I'm covering it. So it was kind of, it was fun. Jeremy Turner says, let's focus on Wisconsin. Wisconsin's going to be ready. Jeremy, that's true. We're going to get in the preview more so this week, you know, because I want to wait. We'll get injury reports, that kind of thing, any any type of things change. Um, I will say this, though, if you guys remember last year, Alex Hornerbrook, when they beat uh, Michigan State, then the next week he came and he played well against Michigan. I, I do expect Alex to... To uh, have a decent game, I li I like Alex Hornerbrook. I think he's a good quarterback. A little bit of a turnover issue, yes, but I do think he's a good quarterback. Young quarterback. Jeremy Turner says I'm glad the game's at noon. So am I. Matthew Destroyer too says Michigan's defense has to be have to have the best game they will ever have if we want to beat Ohio State. I could probably agree with that because look at I mean Michigan State's got a good defense, guys. Statistically, Michigan State does. If you looked, if you watched the game Saturday, it didn't appear that way. They got torched everywhere. I mean, poor tackling, poor coverage, poor everything. Yeah, Michigan's got to be on notice because Ohio State can't. Ohio State scored like three touchdowns. What, what was twenty-one and nothing in the first quarter? I mean, it's Ohio State will just pile it on you. Matt the Destroyer two says I always I used to always say Cornerbrook played for Nebraska. Same colors, right, as Wisconsin, and he's a big-time West school. Easy easy mistake to make. Michael Allen says, basketball question for you. Should we be alarmed by how close North Florida was playing Michigan late into the second half yesterday? MSU destroyed that same team the night before. Yeah, Michael, I was actually there. I covered I covered that game. I was filling in for John, or John Jim Comperoni of SpartanMag.com. So I was there uh, Friday night, watched Michigan. I mean, uh, North Florida's won the Atlantic Sun. They're not a trash team. I mean, yeah, they're going to be way overmatched when they play these big boys, you know, like big time teams and stuff like that. But um, I don't think there's anything to be alarmed uh, uh, for with Michigan. North Florida, maybe they just got a second wind. And yes, they were destroyed the night before by, by Michigan State. They kept it close a little bit for, I want to say, about the first six minutes. They actually were leading at one point. And then Michigan State hopped, hopped out in front. It was like 15-13 and... Shut them down for eight minutes defensively and then just uh, went on to have a field day. Jaron Jackson, I was really impressed uh, by Jaron. I think he's going to be a, a great player for Tom Izzo. Um, Rock City, any truth to Peter's transferring? Seen it on multiple online sources. Who are your sources, Rock City? So show me the link to that. Show me the link to that. Um, I missed a bunch of comments here. Matt Crinton says, random question. I see a lot of trick plays in big games every Saturday, especially from the underdog team. Do you see Michigan trying any kind of trick plays or even screens next week? Maybe screens, but I mean, they're not going to try like what Maryland, you know, that circus stuff. They're not to double pass. <laughs> that was destined to fail. Even though they did have an open wide receiver, uh, you are facing a a defensive line that's going to get in the backfield, and then Khalid Hudson is going to be back in there somewhere. You know, they're going to, so someone's going to be in the backfield, Devin Bush, somebody. And that, to me, that was just a horrible, horrible idea. I even tweeted, I'm like, what in the hell are you doing, Maryland? Um, Jeremy Turner says, Ohio State is so dangerous when coming off a loss. That is true, ask Michigan State. Um, 
at the Destroyer too says uh, Ohio State's defensive line is somewhat inconsistent, but when they were on fire, only Tom Brady could get the ball off in time. RAG3 replays says if Ohio State goes to Big Ten Championship, they could beat Wisconsin. I think so. Matt the Destroyer 2 says every team that is ranked is good after a loss and a bad and bad after a big win. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, because a lot of people, are you talking about how a lot of people now are just all of a sudden crapping on Michigan State, fraudulent, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, they went down there and they got their butts kicked by Ohio State, but if you would have told me Michigan State would be 7-3 and three at this point in the season and again coming off the 3-9th and ninth season, I would have I would have said no way. I thought bowl eligibility uh, would be the goal. So really already for the Spartans, after 3-9 and nine last year, I'm not saying they want to go and just lose the rest of their games, but I mean they're seven and three right now. It's been a good year. I mean they could finish seven and five and it's still okay. Michigan State gets an eighth win this year. I mean playing Maryland uh, Saturday, I think that that's there's a chance to beat Maryland. So I mean eight win season that may be a nine win season. Yeah, Matt the Destroyer two. Michigan is ranked number nineteen. IG three says replays Ohio State is ranked number eight. That is true. Matt the Destroyer 2 says M Michigan State is unranked. No, Michigan State was number 12 in the college football playoff ranking yesterday. Michael Allen says Michigan is not ranked in the poll. It matters. Yeah, guys, when you start ranking, give me the poll too. Because, I mean, what are the poll? AP and college football playoff poll are the only polls that matter to me. And, yeah, I mean, I like the FWAA Super 16 and, you know, the... But there's a bunch of other, you know, polls and power rankings and schedule rankings and all this other stuff. When it comes down to a college football playoff poll and the AP top 25, those are the only ones that matter to me. Matt Crinton says MSU is number 22 in the AP following that loss, yes. But no, they're number 12 in the college football playoff. Highest ranked Big Ten team in the college football playoff poll going into Saturday. Jay Marion says, college football is wide open this year. Every Saturday is a new day of the season. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself, Jay Marion. Otis Hall says, are we going to get our wide receivers involved? I see us struggling to make the deep pass. Um, I mentioned this earlier, Otis. I mean, they're playing power football right now, man. If you got 11 rushing touchdowns in the past three games, they're cranking out 150 yards plus, a couple 300-yard games. You're seeing Karan and Chris Evans go wild. Chris Evans, a point that my friend Cody made yesterday during the game, Look at the way Chris, arm tackle, you're not going to get him. And Chris has gotten stronger. He's shedding tackles. But look at the way that Chris can make himself look get narrow between those gaps. The way that he turns his hips and still watch a couple of those runs. And I do want to cite the Kareem Walker run. Again, proving that he is Michigan's best in-between tacklers, in-between in between tackles runner. You guys saw that carry last night. How many Jordan... Uh, ties does he have on the <laughs> on his hair man I'm, i try to count kareem walker's got a nice stock of dreads hanging out of the back of the helmet and he's got about five six little they're uh maze jordan you know but i'm assuming i don't know if that's what they're made for there's something but little jordan ties marcel wood says leading receiver for michigan is sean McCune, and not a surprise not a surprise, because uh, Marcel, I think you and I were actually talking about this, where the tight ends, you know, we've all thought the tight ends were going to be a major part of this offense. And I think John O'Corn, you know, um, when he was a quarterback, started dispersing the ball a little bit to the tight ends, and we started seeing more of that. And I think that's kind of the safety net for Michigan right now. There isn't a deep passing game. Not really. I mean, what? I mean, Wilton had, I think, what, three or four 30-yard-plus completions. Um... You know, we looked at Brandon Saturday, that 33-yard touchdown to uh, to McCune, or Gentry, rather. But, I mean, other than that, yeah, we're not seeing, you know, them taking deep shots. Part of that is because best deep ball receiver on that team, Tariq Black, is not not healthy. RAG3 replay says Notre Dame and Georgia got owned. Yes, they did. Kevin Grulich says... Or wait, Michael Ardellin. Hey, Michael, I know there's still two games in a bowl game, but with the returning starters... Next year, do you think they're a top five or a playoff team? Very early, just very early, very early. I mean, if they they'll be a they'll be a legit big time contender, I think next year, and then by virtue of that, with a big time champion being maybe a playoff team. So if you want to connect those, but that's as far as I'll go on that. 
Um, Kevin Grulich says, Peters doesn't look bad, but I can't see him having a good game against Ohio, watching Lewerke struggle yesterday. Yeah, Ohio State got all over Brian Lewerke. Uh, Matt the Destroyer 2 says, Funny how I thought the offense would be the strong point of the year before it started. Defense, man. Defense is the trademark. Uh, Adam Badan. Am I saying that? I, I swear I say it five different times every every time you, uh, you're in the live chat, Adam. Says, who wins the East if Michigan wins out? I have to look at the tiebreakers. I think it's your divisional record. Matt the, Matt the Destroyer 2 says, Wilton could throw deep. Which is why I really liked him a bit. Yeah, he did. He could, but I mean, there was an accuracy issue people were talking about. But yeah, Wilton, Wilton could throw deep, definitely. And I mean, last year we saw the extended, and that's why you know with Pep Hamilton coming in, like, okay, is this going to be an expanded? Is this going to be a more vertical passing attack? And I think with a healthy Wilton Spate and a good offensive line, it, we would see more of that. Jay Marion says, "Crazy to think this team could possibly win 11 games. Long shot, but still a shot. There is a shot." As long as there's a shot, it's not that long, is it, Jay Marion? Marcel Woods says Donovan Peoples-Jones is getting to, going, going to be nasty. I believe he's getting the feel for the game. Marcel, tell me what you liked about uh, his downfield blocking yesterday. I think I mentioned this before you got in the live chat. Watch Donovan's blocking. He's the best uh, downfield blocking receiver uh, on the field, either side. Matt the Destroyer 2 says yesterday. I'm not saying overall, but I'm saying yesterday he was. Uh, Matt the Destroyer 2 says, if Michigan wins out, it will be a rematch between Penn State and Wisconsin in the, in the big championship. Yeah. I think I'd have to look at the schedules. You guys are asking me complicated questions right now. The Balls uh, is a nice name, The Balls. Interesting stats from the game. Maryland led almost every game stat. Perry, no stats. Only one sack for Michigan. Maryland dominated return game, but two interceptions to determine the game. And the Balls, that, I think they're short because I want to say Mo Hurst had two sacks. Mo had a sack. I think Kalik had a sack. Maybe Mo had two. I think they had at least two sacks. Rock City says he did put the ball on DPJ, but they got the pass interference call. Michael Allen says Penn State wins East because Penn State owns tiebreaker over us. Yep, that is it. And then if and then the second tiebreaker I think is the divisional record. Otis Hall says I agree that Chris Evans has gotten so much better being elusive and finding different holes. Will we be able to win against Wisconsin? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm going 51% Wisconsin at this point. Marcel Wood says, Josh Uche in that Don Brown defense is scary if he gets to about 230 or 240. Wow, yeah, Josh Uche can hit. Josh Uche is out there. We see you, Josh. We see you. Jay Marion says, right, Matt, the destroyer, too. I think Michigan goes 10-3 and three again. Again, lost Ohio State win versus Wisconsin and a win in a bowl game. That sounds doable. Jay Marion says, this wide receiver quarter in two or three years might be the best in college football. I mean, there's potential with those guys. Certainly, Matt the Destroyer too says, "How about them two trash missed PIs at the start?" Yeah, if it, I mean, it's a uh, who were the uh, who were those on? Who were the targets on those plays, Matt? I'm trying to remember. Matt the Destroyer too says, "Aubrey Solomon comes in next year yeah, as a starter on the defensive line." Yes, yes. Jeremy Turner says Michigan will miss Mo Hurst something serious next season. Yes, they will. They'll miss that belly rub. Kyle uh, Booher says, Kyler Booher says, I'm just now jumping in. What gives you the confidence that Michigan can compete really well against Wisconsin? Just curious. I, I mean, matchup-wise, I think that both teams are, are going to play a similar style game. I think it's going to be a game one on the ground. Alex Hornibrook isn't going to thrash you through the air, so I don't think that there's the, you know, the concern of the secondary getting exposed. It's going to be how tight Michigan can play defense, limiting Jonathan Taylor. I think that's I think that's the main key for Michigan. And I mean, yeah, we haven't seen and going back. I mean, Saquon had a little bit of success. We haven't seen running backs just annihilate Michigan. There's only been like three guys all year that bust off big runs. Um, what's his name? Uh, Morgan Ellison at Indiana. I, I rattled this off a few times. I should have, I should know it by heart. He had like a 31-yarder, Madre won in, and Michigan State had like a 50-yarder. Saquon had, what, that was a 59-yarder. But, I mean, other than that, they haven't really been torched. So, that gives me confidence that Michigan can hang uh, with Wisconsin, to answer your question. D Rock City DPJ was one. Yes, he was. In fact, who was the other one? Grant Perry. Okay. Yeah, and that's how, and how did I miss that? I was like, I didn't even see Grant Perry on the field. And, yeah, he, yep. 
Grant Perry was invisible to me yesterday. And Harbaugh did say that there was a good chance that he would return this week. So he did. Jeremy Turner says he's still no Mo Hurst. Haven't seen him and D lineman that good since Brandon Graham and Mike Martin. Michael Kelly says Mike McCray will be able to cover Taylor better than he did at Saquon and passing routes because Taylor is more of a power guy than speed guy. Yep, I agree with that. Saquon's a different breed. Jonathan, Jonathan Taylor is power back. That's going to be Devin Bush, Mike Kalik, all those guys for sure. Uh, Tino Dadon, or Tanai Dadon, however you spell that. Any uh, updates on Higdon and Gary? Just high ankle sprains, what was reported on, on Karan and Rashan, uh, apparent arm injury, but nothing, you know, nothing uh, in terms of a timetable. I imagine tomorrow, uh, if it's not me, somebody will ask Harbaugh during this Monday press conference. So, uh, guys, we are going, whoa, we're 45 minutes. Time flies when I'm yapping my mouth. I want to make sure if we covered every single topic. Um, and I want to see... there's any oh here's a good reply I can't read it it looks like some kind of like Russian writing at a underscore native underscore son replies and it says our coaches asked to more most importantly and this is my tweet yesterday list list of Michigan players that suck per you Twitter fiends Chris Evans Klee Hudson Sean McCune Patrick Kugler Donovan Peoples Jones feel free to add uh, add if I miss someone so Again, joking around, and I think you guys know that. But yeah, and Jim Harbaugh. Remember, there were some Michigan fans who were like questioning Jim Harbaugh. I thought that was hilarious. It's just never, nothing's ever good enough. Nothing's ever good enough. My Chris Evans troll, who likes to tweet the stats at me, he's tweeted like 15 carries for 80 yards. I didn't respond, but I mean, 15 carries for 80 yards is pretty good. Plus, you had to consider what he had, like two catches for 29 yards and two touchdowns. Chris Evans had a day. But keep telling me he sucks. I'll just keep letting you know that you're wrong. So, uh, final questions, guys. Final questions or comments. Matt the Destroyer 2 says, I think, it, I think it, it's funny that all the top teams are either red or orange. Jay Marion says McCune and Hudson, Evans, Higdon are examples why you can't go by stars when it comes to recruiting. Thank you. Tino Dadon. Tino Dadon. Help me out there, man. Higdon was great. I hope he can be back. He and Evans are a great combo. Yes, they are. Otis Hall says we're going to need taller pass defenders playing man coverage against elite teams in the future. Do we have any? Yes, his name is Ben St. Juiced. Yes, you do. Watch out for Ben next year, guys. I think Ben's going to be a real good player. Matt the Destroyer 2 says Rashawn Gary for Heisman. I say Matt the Destroyer 2 for Heisman. How's that? Jeremy Turner says, also, I thought that was why Michigan came out and a little sluggish in the second half. I must have missed something. What do you mean, Jeremy? Michael Allen says, Peters and Evans representing Indiana. Let's go, baby. Yep. Brandon from Avon. Uh, Chris Evans. From Ben Davis, I actually went to high school down there for a year. I went to Broad Ripple. I had my choice. I could have gone to Broad Ripple, Arlington, Arsenal Tech. Oh, uh, shoot. I think I could have gone to Manual, too, which is on the south side. I lived on the east side of Indianapolis. But I, I could have gone to, like, four different high schools. I picked the lesser of the evil. Because <laughs> IPS, I, I guess, are pretty... We had metal detectors at Broad Ripple. It was kind of weird. And then I ended up at, uh, went, graduated from Clarkston, which was like going from Dangerous Minds to Clueless. And then growing up in Swartz Creek, which is kind of, it's not like country, but you know, I mean, it's rural. I can't even say that word a little bit, but rural. I never, I've never been able to say that word. I can't, rural. Not quite country, you know, not way out there boondocks, but it, it was weird. So, yeah. Uh, Jeremy Turner says, road win from Michigan was big. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, any win's big, but yeah, road win and big for Brandon. Uh, Tanandadon, that's what I'm calling you now. Tino Dadon, Tanandadon. Where's that? What syllables do I emphasize? That's what I gotta know. I think the Wisconsin game will come down to can the offensive pass protect Peters and make a play. I think it's run game. But, yeah, I mean, they gotta protect Brandon for sure.
I'm sure if so, he needs Penn State to play in another monsoon. All right, guys, I'm going to shut it down today. I think that I've covered all the topics. I, I appreciate you guys watching. Again, please like, subscribe, share the channel. I'll have uh, player interviews, press conference video from tomorrow. Uh, thanks for hanging with me while I look for a, a new outlet. Something something will pop up right now. I'm just doing a little, little thing on the side for uh, Spartan Mag. It'll be kind of sporadic. I'm not sure how much it's going to be, but... Um, a lot of stuff will be still on my free agent blog. And I think what I'm going to do, instead of probably like writing every day, because I've been, I haven't been on it lately, but I think I might just kind of concentrate on some like long features right now. Um, I've been really wanting to, to dive into one. And uh, actually in the beginning of the year with FanRag, I had a very, I, I had like a season long feature, career feature planned that I wanted to do on Mo Hurst. So I'm actually hoping that I could still do that because, uh, you know, Mo, Mo's had, Especially these past two years, if you, if you watched Mo Hurst go from a guy who not even a lot of people talked about to one of the best defi best defensive linemen in the in the country, it's been just a hell of a ride for him. And I remember um, this past summer, uh, I was down at WTKA in Ann Arbor with Michael Spath on uh, Michigan Insider, and and Anthony Broom of Two Four Seven Sports was there as well. And I remember we were talking about like the best defensive players or something like that, and for some reason, Mo Hurst like slipped my mind, and it's and it's weird that um, I'm not saying like he, he's a forgettable player, but I mean you know everybody talk about Rashawn, 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 but I mean Maurice Hurst is one of the best D linemen in the country, invaluable to this Michigan defense, that's for sure. The ball says thanks for the stream, dude. Appreciate it, guys. Michael Allen, good to talk with you, Adam. Rock City, peace, Adam. Greg Ryan said almost made it. Greg, did you just get in? <laughs> weird. It is, uh, we're going 52 minutes right now. Last comment says from, this one's from Kyler Booher at the M Turf. Unfortunately, MSU plays Rutgers in Maryland. I just don't see them being able to actually beat MSU. Big Bubble Blue, Momo, NFL Beast. Kyle Ryan says, yeah, I'm sorry, Greg, but I tweeted er earlier. If you want to go back and, uh, and rewatch it, that's fine. But the, the fun for me is actually, you know, answering you guys' questions and it's live. So that, that's kind of the fun part for me. So. Appreciate you guys watching again. I want to thank uh, Tim and Keith down there at Mr. Spots in Ann Arbor, 808 State Street in Ann Arbor, keeping me fed throughout the football season, MrSpotsAnnArbor.com. Follow me on Twitter at AdamBiggers81. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I'll, uh, I'll have a live stream tomorrow recapping Jim Harbaugh's Monday press conference, and we'll start talking about Wisconsin. So get those questions ready, guys. Follow me on Twitter at AdamBiggers81. Read the free agent blog on WordPress, and... Uh, I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. Have a good one. Thank you.